everyone, today we're going to be making this cute little hamster in a walnut. If you follow me on Instagram at tinybirdtreasure, you probably saw that we adopted an abandoned hamster, um, and her name is Mrs. Brisby. She's a teddy bear hamster, um, also known as a Syrian hamster. She's very, very, very sweet, and so she was my inspiration for making this cute little thing. Um, pretty simple. Uh, this is this is beginner to intermediate tutorial, so I hope you enjoy it. We're going to go ahead and get started with a little ball of core wool or white wool, um, just whatever you have on hand that you want her base color to be. Um, our Mrs. Brisby, she's that tan kind of color and, and white, so that's what I started with. Um, you're going to need to start felting just to kind of close get the ball close closer textured and um, then we'll start working on separating her head and kind of shaping her nose a little bit. This is going to be an all one piece tutorial uh, except for her ears and eyes and um, the coloring but as far as like we're not making a separate head. I wanted her to fit inside of a walnut because I just really like animals in a walnut. If you've seen my bunny in a walnut video I just really love miniature things. So I'm using a walnut to kind of gauge how small I want the ball to be right here I'm just making um, making a place for where her her neck is going to be and um, as you felt that down make sure to roll it between your hands and this will keep keep things from getting too tight in certain areas and just keep shaping um, I switched to a medium gauge needle right here just so that it doesn't get too tight too fast um, and just continue felting to get her pointy little nose made and uh, she can be as fluffy as you want if you still want her her body kind of squishy it just depends on the kind of kind of texture you want but we're gonna be making her neck and her nose and then we'll move on from there Right here I'm kind of just, I was kind of making the little spaces for where the eyes are going to go. Her eyes are not going to be felt. I made them out of little nail art pearls that I painted with black nail polish to make them shiny. You can use um, glass eyes, but I just didn't have any on hand. Next we're going to go ahead and add her colored wool. Um, our hamster, our actual Mrs. Brisby, she has little patches of white and um, kind of a white undercoat and then the tan on top and I kind of wanted to mimic that and she's also very furry. She has these two little like tail wings <laughs> that come out um, behind her so as I'm felting I'm also trying to keep the little um, the little her little tail fins of fur um, as, as I'm felting around. So if you see me kind of focus on keeping that part fuzzy, that's why. Um, you can of course make it more close textured and um, there, there are ways to make the fur look a little more realistic, but since this is still kind of a tutorial, uh, beginner tutorial, I wanted to, wanted to stick with just basic, <laughs> basic ideas.
Right here, I'm just um, making her neck and head a little bit more prominent again, and um, I should have mentioned this earlier, but make sure when you're adding her little fur to use your fine gauge needle, um, that will keep you from kind of misshaping her base shape and just attach the, um, the colored wool to her. So those are her little her little tail fins. I'm still trying to keep those <laughs> her little wings, and um, just uh, fill in where you want. And we'll go back and re redo her head a little bit just to make sure that none of the definition was lost. And then add her little facial features.
Okay, so for her nose, I kind of just um, rubbed some pink wool between my fingers and then cut off a little snippet of it, and um, and now needle felting it into place. And you don't want to you don't want to push too hard or felt too much because then the pink will just disappear into her face. Um, I'm using my fine gauge needle right now so that I don't mess up the pointiness of her nose too much. 
and then um, just go ahead and felt back over the edges and roll the nose between your fingers a little bit so that the um, cone shape of her face uh, reappears. <laughs> Just trying to flatten her out a little bit on her belly so that she sits without rolling over and then to make her look a little bit more hunched over these are this is all being done with my thickest gauge needle just to kind of reshape her body a little bit after all the work we've been doing on her and then I'm going to move on to making her ears they are a little lopsided because I'm terrible at getting them the same size but um, uh, anyway, go ahead and use, you can use whatever kind of um, skin tone color that you have. Um, I used, or I had kind of a peachy fair skin tone color, but just whatever, whatever matches the hamster you have in your head <laughs> or picture you're following. Um, and so that, that peachy color will act as her ears and then we'll move on to her eyes. To make um, a little slit for her eyeballs to kind of make it look like it's more set inside of her body, I'm just going to cut the wool a little bit with this X-Acto knife. It, um, it, it'll just make it look a little more natural and not so bug-eyed with the kind of eyeballs I'm going to be using. Um, like I said earlier, these are little nail art pearls. Uh, they're the perfect size. I just painted them with some black nail polish to make them shiny and then I'm adding a little bit of fabric glue onto the back and setting them into place with um, some, these are jeweling tweezers and they make working with miniatures 
really, really nice because they're super precise. And so um, you could also use glass eyes that have little uh, spindles in the back helps them set a little easier but I am <laughs> if you follow my blog I'm a frugal frugal living kind of person so um, I just try to use what I have and that um, glass eyes can get expensive when if you're if you're making them all the time if you're making these little creatures all the time and practicing so that's why I like using the the little nail art pieces so anyway after those are dry your little hamster is all finished. If you want to see how to clean out the walnut, I'll go ahead and post that video, um, how to open it and clean it and get the two halves without breaking it. I'll post that video in the info box below. I also have links to all of her, um, all of the supplies I used in the info box below. It'll be take you'll be taken to my blog, and um, if you don't have any of these things, you can find them there. So here she is finished in her little walnut house. Uh, this is from the Gilded Walnut video, and it's the same one I used in the Mini Bunny video. And she's she's finished. She's your little pocket pet. Uh, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any suggestions for future animals or um, needle felting suggestions, go ahead and leave the leave me a comment. And thank you so much for watching. Click subscribe if you'd like to see more. <laughs>